My name is Rafael Wysocki. I work at Intel in the System Software Engineering Division, and I work mostly on the uh, mainline Linux kernel, and mostly on the power management support in it and um, ACPI, uh, ACPI support code in, in it. Today, I will be talking about Suspend to Idle, which is a power management feature in the Linux kernel. Uh, but before getting into details, let me give uh, a short introduction to this topic to get everyone on the same page. So, Suspend to Idle is a variant of System Suspend, <clears throat> which is uh, a feature by which the system can can be put into a low power state as a whole uh, and in that low power state it doesn't do anything except for basic maintenance like uh, battery monitoring and temperature monitoring uh, and so the state is uh, referred to as a system sleep state uh, because because it is kind of analogous to animal sleep in which the the body is not does not appear to do anything and whatever it does is regarded as basic maintenance so why is it needed why is it there in, in the linux kernel so there are use cases uh for that obviously that's the reason and the, and and actually there, there's more there are more use cases than just the two listed here in the slide uh, but these two are canonical use cases for system suspend. So the first one is a laptop in a bag case. When the user uh, puts a laptop into a bag, closes the laptop lead and puts the laptop into a bag, and then the laptop is not expected to do anything except for the basic maintenance. And that's why the, this is a use case for system suspend. Another use case is when uh, the user goes away from the computer keyboard, uh, walks away from it, and, uh, and after a certain time, uh, the system may decide to suspend itself with the assumption that, they, the, that it is not going to be used uh, for some time going forward, and therefore it only needs to do basic maintenance. So again, this is, this is a canonical use case for system suspend. Uh, as I said, there, there are other use cases, but the, the two above are, or in, in the slide are just enough for to have it, for having it in the kernel. So that's why we have system suspend. Now, uh, a bit of term terminology. Uh, so uh, as I said before, the, the, sy the system state uh, after suspend uh, is referred to as a sleep state, and in, uh, in contrast to that, the, the, sy the system state in which uh, the system is operating and, and processing data and doing everything the user needs is referred to as the working state of the system. So we have two states, the working state and a sleep state, and a suspend transition which, which uh, takes the system from the uh, working state to a sleep state, and a resume transition which takes the system uh, in the opposite direction from the sleep state to the mm, working state. Uh, the suspend transition is triggered by user space through a special control interface. I will be talking about it a bit later. And uh, the resume transition is triggered by a so-called wake up event when one of the devices in the system signals uh, need to wake, wake it up from sleep state. And these are the code flows uh, for system suspend in Linux. One of them is referred to as platform-based suspend, and the other is the suspend to idle I will be focusing on in, my, in the rest of my talk. So uh, the platform-based suspend has been there for like several years. Uh, it's been introduced around uh, or was introduced around 2004 uh, and was stabilized around 2009 and then it has been has not been changing a lot since then 
Uh, and Sustanto Idol is, is newer. It, it was introduced in 2013 and, uh, and it evolved quite a bit uh, since its, uh, its introduction. I will be talking about that. So the, if you look at, at those um, code flows, uh, you, you will notice that uh, they are there are sim similarities between them and there are differences. So the first steps of the suspend transition, the three first steps in both cases are the same, and also the three last steps of the uh, resume transition are the same in both cases. So when the system is asked to suspend itself by user space, or the kernel is asked to, to suspend the, the system by user space, I should say, uh, it first called it first calls notifiers uh, in order to notify all of the interested subsystems about the upcoming transition. Then tasks are frozen, which means that every user space task get a, gets a signal and that causes it to enter a function in which it doesn't doesn't participate in, in any mutual exclusion and waits for a uh, for a uh, for for a notice to, to leave that function. So it's looping in a, in a function until a, a corresponding uh, towing of tasks happens during the system resume. Uh, kernel threads uh, may or may not participate in that. Uh, it, it is on a opt-in basis for them. The next step is suspending devices, uh, which is carried out in four phases. I'm not going to go into much details about what the, what those phases do. In particular, there are four of them in which phase all of the devices can be accessed, can be touched, uh, and, and the, the, the phases uh, happen uh, each after another in, in, in the order given in the slide. So uh, during the system resume, uh, there also are four phases of resuming devices which are analogous, each of them is analogous to one of the suspend phases. And, uh, and um, after resuming devices, the tasks are, uh, are thawed, so they can continue running. And then um, all the interested subsystems are notified about the completion of the resume transition. Uh, so, in the um, platform-based suspend case, there are more actions uh, carried out in addition to, to the ones I was talking about, uh, but they are not carried out in the suspend to idle case. So generally speaking, uh, the platform-based suspend after suspending devices, uh, it prepares the, the system to call the, the platform firmware uh, to complete the, the suspend transition. So the last step is calling the platform firmware, the platform online step, offline step, sorry. And then the platform firmware uh, takes over and, and does something to turn the power off and, 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 and uh, finalize the transition. And also in that case, the platform firmware handles the, the wake up signaling. Uh, so suspend so, so to idle is kind of a simplification of that which is based on the observation that the, the last steps of uh, platform-based suspend are not actually necessary on contemporary systems. So they may be skipped. And instead of that, uh, CPUs can go into idle states and, and wait uh, in those states for a wake up event. And in that case, all of the wake up events have to be handled by the kernel, by the operating system. So, as I said before, suspend to idle is kind of a simplification of, of platform-based suspend, uh, and that's the reason why it was introduced. And uh, the slide uh, summarizes the, the most important properties of it. So, first of all, it is a system suspend variant. Uh, it is expected to draw less power than, uh, than runtime idle or active idle, which is, uh, so runtime idle is, is a combination of 
uh, energy efficiency features which are available in the working state of the system. So if the system is suspended, uh, it should draw less power than, than <clears throat> any combination of power management features in the uh, working state, at least theoretically. Uh, suspend to idle is more lightweight than uh, uh, the platform-based suspend, which is kind of obvious because it, it, it does less or takes less steps in order to suspend the system. Uh, it relies on the CPU idle infrastructure. So if the CPU idle time management infrastructure is not available, uh, suspend to idle is not actually supported. And it should be available on all, all platforms that uh that have the cpu idle time, time management infrastructure in contrast to platform-based suspend which requires uh, specific support on the platform side here's a control interface to to uh to control system suspend so there are two main files in, in SysFS for that. One is SysPowerState, uh, in which uh, which can be used by user space to trigger a transition into a sleep state. Actually, mem is the uh, the string to write to this file to trigger system suspend, and it can be either uh, platform based or uh, suspend to idle, depending depending on what is what is supported by the given system. Uh, the, the one in, in this slide, <clears throat> the example system from which those, those files were taken, uh, supported both suspend to idle and, and uh, the platform-based suspend, which is referred to as deep in this uh, interface. So uh, the syspower mem underscore sleep file can be used to, to uh, choose the variant of suspend that, that is that will be triggered by writing mem to suspend state. Uh, in this, in the example in the slide, this is suspend to idle uh, by writing deep to uh, mem underscore sleep. The the square brackets will move to deep, and then uh, the platform based suspend will be triggered by writing mem to suspend state. <clears throat> in addition to those two files. There, there are uh, multiple files uh, in SysFS for controlling wake up. Uh, so every device that can wake up the system from sleep or from the sleep state entered through system suspend uh, has a, a power slash wake up file, uh, which can be written to uh, with one of the, of the enabled or disabled strings. And if it is enabled, then the device is expected to be able to, to wake up the system from sleep states, uh, in particular from the from the suspend to idle sleep state. And if the if disabled is written to this file for for this particular device, then the device is not expected to wake the system up. Okay, so this is how to uh, how it works uh, and how to control it, uh, but. The, it is instructive to have a look at how it evolved. So, so in order to kind of recall how we got here, how we got where we, uh, what we have currently in the kernel, uh, and, and and I'm going to focus on that on in, in the rest of my talk. So first of all, suspend to idle was introduced in, uh, in Linux 3.13 in 2014. Uh, so actually, it appeared in the in in 3.14. It was introduced earlier in the in the development the cycle of this kernel. So uh, so, but this is this is the first release in which it was present, and that that was very similar to what we have right now in Linux except that it was much simpler than the current implementation. Uh, and I would even call it oversimplified. And I, uh, the idea at that time was very, very simple. It was that, yeah, the system suspend infrastructure, which was introduced for uh, system-wide suspend or system platform-based suspend, sorry, 
uh, which, in, which was introduced for the uh, platform based suspend, it was actually considered to be suffi sufficient for suspend to idle as it was without any modifications. And the idea was that, oh, we can just, instead of uh, taking uh, non board CPUs offline and so on, we can just kick all of the CPUs into the idle loop and then uh, make, uh, make the suspend task, carrying out system suspend, to simply go to sleep and wait for a certain situation or a certain thing to happen. And that thing was that it waited for a specific data to be written into a specific location in memory. And obviously this uh, had to be done by somebody and, and the idea was that it would be done by, a, by an interrupt handler. So when there was a wake up interrupt, a handler would run and that handler would write into a location of memory monitored by the uh, suspend task. And then, then the task, uh, the suspend task will see uh, the write uh, and then it will wake up and then it will carry out the resume of the system. Well, that was straightforward enough, except that it didn't work as expected. And the reason why it didn't work as accepted uh, is related to how in interrupts are handled during system suspend and resume in Linux. And that is, uh, so in order to explain that, I need to say that there are two levels of uh, interrupt handlers in Linux. There are uh, so-called low-level handlers, which take care of the uh, of the action specific to the interrupt controller in the system. So every the, for 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 every interrupt controller, there is a the, there is a low-level handler. Um, or you can or you can think that. For, for every interrupt controller, there is a low level handler, which is called every time this interrupt contro controller um, signals an interrupt and that uh, handles the controller itself. On top of that, there are device level handlers, which are referred to as action handlers and, it, uh, uh, and device drivers can register those action handlers and there may be multiple uh, action handlers per, per interrupt line or IRQ. And, and they all are invoked when the interrupt happens or, or triggers on that IRQ uh, after the, uh, the low level hand, handler uh, has handled the controller. And the problem is that uh, the action handlers were expected to wake up the, the system from or, or kick the uh, suspend task to trigger a system resume uh, uh, while the system was suspended to idle. But action handlers actually don't run in uh, while the system is suspended as a rule. Uh, they during system resume, uh, there is a, there is an operation uh, referred to as, as uh, IRQ suspend, which prevents action handlers from running uh, between the suspend late phase of system suspend and the resume early phase of system resume. So the the, the orange and gray uh, area in the in the slide is when the action handlers don't run. So so actually they cannot wake up the system uh, or they, they cannot kick the, uh, the suspend task to carry out the system resume. So in order to address this problem, uh, uh, the, the low level handler, handlers, uh, the low level inter interrupt handlers had to be modified. And, and the modification was done for, for actually for all of them at the same time. Uh, and what was done, uh, there are two flags uh, or two new flags were added. One of them, uh, IRQD underscore wake up underscore set is used to uh, notify the, the IRQ subsystem that this, uh, the IRQ for which it is set 
uh, is expected to wake up the system from suspend. And there is another flag called IRQD underscore wake up underscore armed, which is, uh, which is set by the IRQ subsystem during system suspend if the, if the other flag was set earlier for the given IRQ. And if the armed flag is set and the IRQ triggers during while system is suspended to idle or in this uh, or in this uh, gray box that, that, that was showing uh, in the previous slides, uh, the the IRQ will or, or the IRQ uh, subsystem will automatically trigger uh, the suspend task to carry out the system resume. So this is automatic. This is done uh, in, in such a way that it doesn't, it is not noticeable in the, the handling of this is not noticeable in the working state of the system. And it works quite well. And mm, the action handlers don't actually need to worry about uh, system resume anymore. <clears throat> All right, this change was made in Linux 3.19 in 2015, along with several other uh, improvements uh, listed in those in those blue balloons in the slide. So the Analyze Suspend uh, tool was introduced, which allows uh, people to, uh, to um, profile system suspend and find out which devices take take uh, how much time is taken by, by individual devices to suspend during system suspend and so on. So you can get a profile of the system uh, with respect to system suspend and resume. Uh, there was another interesting feature that was added uh, during that time is direct complete, which allows some devices that were uh, already suspended in the working state of the system to stay suspended over system suspend and resume. And of course, there was this uh, wake up interrupts handling rework that I was talking about and, uh, and uh, suspend to idle started to ask for the deepest idle state uh, of CPUs uh, after, after devices have been suspended. And also uh, device callbacks in, in all of the phases uh, are now uh, asynchronously called, so which means that they can be, uh, in, in, in each phase, they can be uh, called in parallel with each other, uh, as long as there are no direct dependencies between the devices in question. Okay, so improvements were made, but that was not enough or not all yet, because there are timers. Okay, and some of the timers are periodic. Uh, and the way uh, the periodic timer works usually is that the timer function uh, programs the timer itself to trigger again after a while uh, and so on. So the periodic timers program, a uh, periodic timer programs itself to, to trigger again. Uh, the, the, the problem is that timers the timer interrupts uh, are actually or uh, action handlers for timer interrupts, I should say, are actually allowed to run uh, during the late suspend and early resume of the system or, or the no RQ phases. And also while the system is suspended to idle. So if there is a periodic timer, it or if there was a periodic timer, it, it would uh, cause the system to, or, or, or cause at least one CPU in the system to wake up, see what's going on. Obviously, this was a timer, so it was not a wake up, in, uh, a wake up interrupt for the whole system, right? And so the CPU would go to idle uh, again, and this was going in a loop while the system was suspended to idle. And obviously, it prevented the system from, or the CPU, uh, the CPU block in the system from uh, from saving energy, or at least from saving as much energy as it could save or could have saved. So that needed to be dealt with. Uh, and the way to deal with it is to add uh, the ability to suspend timekeeping to the suspend to idle code. So this is kind of straightforward because that 
the the suspento idle code knows which CPU is going into the into an idle state uh, uh, as the last one, right? So if this is the last CPU going idle during suspento idle, it will trigger suspend suspend of timekeeping. And the suspend of timekeeping causes basically prevents all, uh, any timer from from being used uh, going forward. So it is it is sufficient to, to suspend the timekeeping in order to get rid of the timer problem entirely. Uh, if the suspend going idle, uh, if the CPU going idle, sorry, uh, at the moment is not the last one, it, it only have has to uh, stop the scheduler take on itself. And after or during wake up, the first CPU waking up will resume the timekeeping, and and uh, and the next CPUs uh, going out of idle will start the local uh, scheduler tick on themselves. And the rest of the processing is uh, is as it was before. So the suspend of timekeeping allows us to to, to avoid the timer issue. And this was done in the in Linux 4.4 in 2016. Uh, in addition to that, in, in the same kernel, uh, uh, that there was a new framework for uh, for managing IRQs dedicated for system wake up. So on some systems are there are um, there are IRQs which are dedicated for waking up the system from so from sleep states and they are not used for anything else. And and, uh, and the kernel got a new framework for managing those uh, those IRQs. Okay, and this was the time when uh, when it looks like that everything was done, and uh, and uh, the the feature was complete. So it was sort of like in the in the human development when the when the, the kid uh, goes to a university, uh, and he or she thinks that he knows everything and now, you know, can can do by uh, by herself or himself, but but it turns out that there are challenges and 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 they need to be faced and they are like part of the adulthood life. Or adult life. Uh, so that happened to suspend to idle as well. So in, in 2017, uh, two changes were made in, in Linux 4.10, which improved uh, the, uh, the feature. So first of all, system suspend generally started to support device links. Device links are a feature that allows uh, device dependencies to be taken account, uh, into account during suspend and resume e e more precisely than it was possible before. And, uh, and that allowed, uh, allowed developers to, to, to fix many problems related to device, to device interactions during suspend and resume of the system. Uh, and our interface uh, to the control interface I was talking about uh, was uh, was changed to, to get uh, its final uh, shape as it is today. So the interface that I was talking about was actually introduced at that time in, in Linux 4.10. And then it turned out that, that there are problems, okay? And the problems were related to uh, to the way uh, that system wake up events were handled by uh, embedded controllers in some uh, PC laptop computers. So the embedded controller is a, uh, a small processor running in a, or located in, a, in the system, which, executes a program to control uh, system features like battery, uh, fans, uh, thermal monitoring, and similar things. Usually the embedded controller doesn't have any business to be to signal anything to the uh, main CPU during system sleep. It, it, should, it should just take care of the basic maintenance by itself without, without 
uh, interrupting the, the main processor. However, in some systems, uh, embedded controller is also responsible for handling system wake up events, such as the uh, power button press. So if the power button is pressed, it, the signal from it goes to the embedded controller. And then the embedded controller is re responsible for signaling uh, the main CPU about that through uh, the special IRQ uh, as associated with ACPI, which is referred to as ACPI SCI or System Control Interrupt. Uh, NSCI is, is a uh, multiplexed interrupt, which is used for many different reasons, or may trigger for, for many different reasons, like the wake up signaling from PCI devices, or wake up signaling from, from non PCI devices, and so on. The, the EC GPE signal, signal uh, uh, shown in the slide is a, uh, is a uh, is, is a signal line uh, from the embedded controller to the uh, ACVI SCI multiplexer that, that causes uh, the SCI to be triggered. And usually, uh, if, if the uh, embedded controller was not responsible for handling system wake up events, that ECGPE line can just be disabled while the system is sleeping or suspended to idle. And so the embedded controller would never trigger SCI in the states. Unfortunately, if the system wake up events are, are to be handled by the embedded controller, that cannot be done. Which means that all of the uh, activities of uh, the embedded controller would now cause the SCI to trigger during system sleep and that, uh, and that would interrupt the main CPU and then uh, it is necessary to, to distinguish the wake-up events coming from the uh, embedded controller from non-wake-up events coming from the embedded controller, like you know battery status change or thermal uh, some thermal events that uh, that it may want to notify the CPU about or something. And that is not easy. So there was an attempt in, 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 in Linux 4.15 to handle that by, um, by uh, looking. So obviously, you know, in order to distinguish between wake up and non wake up events from the embedded controller, the embedded controller needs to be looked at and then the events need to be processed. And then, and then it turns out if they are wake up events or they are not wake up events. So uh, the attempt in Linux 4.15 was to do that after uh, partially resuming devices. So between the no IRQ resume phase and the resume early phase during system resume, uh, because the, the idea was to do that after uh, allowing uh, the action handlers for, uh, for interrupt lines to, to, be, uh, to, to run again, so that if there is an, an interrupt trigger during the EC processing, then it, it would be handled as usual, and then and then it, 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 the, there, there wouldn't be problems with processing of events. Unfortunately, unfortunately it turned out that this, this this didn't work because device drivers were confused by this uh, additional loop between the, 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 uh, the uh, no IRQ resume and uh, no IRQ suspend of devices. And some of them didn't work correctly because of that. So that, needs to, that needed to be reverted or, or rather, uh, or rather uh, changed so that the, the, the whole the flow looks like the, the initial one. Actually, there is only uh, there. There is no additional loop in this in this flow. All of the processing of wake up events happens in this gray uh, box at the bottom. And uh, but but today it doesn't only include the wake wake up interrupts processing, but also uh, things like embedded controller events processing. So if there is a wake up interrupt, and it turns out to be ACPI SCI then 
the SCI uh, interrupt handler is run uh, in line or in band in the context of the suspend task, which is handling all of the suspend and resume of the system. And that SCI uh, interrupt handling covers the embedded controller uh, processing. So if, if an SCI triggers, the embedded controller is looked at and the events coming from it are processed and, every, uh, and they are, uh, and they are um, handled as, uh, as appropriate, depending on whether or not they are, uh, they are system wake-up events. Most of them are not system wake-up events, but if there is a system wake-up event coming from the EC, it will trigger the, uh, the uh, suspend task to resume the system. Okay, so this is a whole story basically, and and it and it illustrates very very nicely, in my opinion, the the virtuous uh, cycle of the kernel development, which is that if you change the code in order to implement a feature or or improve it, uh, people are, will start to use it and then experiment and test it, and then there will be problems. The problems will be reported, and that. Uh, and that obviously uh, needs to be uh, investigated. So the tools are developed and diagnostic features are added and, and, uh, and then it allows developers to understand the issues better. And then uh, that in turn allows them to, to write better code and make code changes and the circle closes this way, right? So this is like the or the cycle clauses, I should say. So, so this is what happened in this case in, 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 in a few, actually in a few times, right, in a row. So some changes uh, were causing people to, to try them, to try, try the, new, the new code, and then they found out that it didn't work as expected and then reported problems and that caused the new, uh, uh, the, the the problems to be uh, analyzed and understood and, and new code was written and it happened at least three or four times in the development of suspend to idle. So this is a good illustration of how the kernel development at large works in my opinion. All right, so that is basically all I had to say. Uh, but let me mention two things. Uh, so first of all, the, I, I have references to presentations that uh, in, in that space are related to power management and to uh, system suspend uh, and resume in particular uh, that were given before, uh, mostly during Linux Foundation uh, conferences. So in the reference part of my uh, slide deck, there is a uh, there are a few references that should, the, the links should actually be active so you can use them to uh, see what uh, what people had to say about this. Uh, the, it mostly is, uh, the links are mostly to, to my presentations, one of them is to the presentation of, from Len Brown. Uh, so that there are more details in those uh, in those presentations and so you're welcome to try them and see what what they are about and I, I have to show the slide uh, the disclaimer slide um, required by Intel all right so that's it and if you have any questions or comments on concerns please let me know thank you <laughs>